4-2-3-1 formation is one of the most popular and widely used formations in world football today, with clubs and international teams regularly using it in their quest for glory. While it is seen less in youth sports, the 4-2-3 formation, when used correctly, can be effective strategy for even the youngest of teams. In this guide, we will explain what the 4-2-3-1 formation is, how it is set up, and discuss the strengths and weaknesses of the formation. We'll also highlight the best formation to counter the 4-2-3-1. So no matter whether you're playing a 4-2-3-1 or playing against this formation, we've got you covered. The 4-2-3-1 formation consists of four units. The defence is made up of a back four with two central defenders, the four and the five, a left back, the three, and the right back, the two. Ahead of the defence are two central defensive midfielder players, numbered the 6 and the 8. Further up the field, an attacking centre mid, the 10, is flanked by wingers on the left, the 11, and on the right, the 7. These three attacking midfielders play operate behind a lone central striker, otherwise known as the number 9. There are several different characteristics of the 4-2-3-1 formation that are fairly unique and worth mentioning. Firstly, the formation has four distinct lines rather than three, such as in a 4-3-3. Secondly, the 4-2-3-1 always has two central defensive midfield players. These are sometimes referred to as a double pivot. Thirdly, the outside left and right wingers usually operate a little further infield compared to traditional wingers. In fact, Quite often, a coach will select players to play on the opposite side to that of their strongest foot to encourage them to come inside more. When this happens, these players are referred to as inverted wingers. The difference between the 4-2-3-1 and the 4-2-1-3 formation lies in the placement of the wingers. In the 4-2-3-1, the wingers flank the attacking centre midfielder. They also play a little further in field, more central, than regular wingers. In a 4-2-1-3, the outside midfielders are more aptly described as traditional wingers. They play wider and further forward, flanking the central striker. As such, the 4-2-3-1 offers more strength in the middle of the park, which is why it tends to be utilised a lot more frequently. A key strength of the 4-2-3-1 is the defensive stability and balance that the formation brings. Having two central defensive midfield players in front of the back four gives the team maximum strength in key central areas and ensures opponents will have difficulty breaking the team down and attacking in the central channel. The 4-2-3-1 formation is also excellent for teams that want to possess the ball and build out from the back. By having four distinct lines rather than three, such as in the 4-3-3, the formation provides more options for players to play short, sharp passes as they try to progress from defence to midfield and into attack. As the team moves forward, utilising five midfield players also makes it easier for teams to create central overloads and dominate possession by triangulating and moving the ball quickly. In wide areas, the presence of wingers or the inverted wingers that are comfortable cutting inside provides two great opportunities. One, these players are more likely to score from wide areas by cutting in on their stronger foot. Two, by tucking in and playing more centrally, they also create space for fullbacks to join in the attack and make overlapping runs to get in behind the defence. Another strength of the 4-2-3-1 formation is that it is great for teams wanting to play a high pressing game and stop their opponents from building out from the back. With the presence of the two central defensive midfielders, the three attacking midfielders and central striker are free to go man to man on the opposition's back four, making it more likely to unsettle the opponent's defence and win the ball back close to their goal. Like all football formations, the 4-2-3-1 is not without its weakness. One of the most common problems teams have when playing in this formation is that breaking down opponents that play in low blocks can be difficult. 
with five midfield players operating in central areas, the 4-2-3-1 playing teams can struggle to create enough width to break down well-organised back lines. In addition to this, in the 4-2-3-1 formation, it is easy for the lone striker to become isolated. This makes it particularly difficult for the striker to find space to score, especially when playing against two central defenders. Another key weakness of the 4-2-3-1 formation is that there is strong requirements for fullbacks to get forward, join attacks and be a creative force in their team. As most defenders are usually more comfortable defending, this extra responsibility can prove a burden for players not comfortable in forward positions with the ball at their feet. The best formation to counter the 4-2-3-1 is a traditional 4-3-3. In a 4-3-3 formation, a team can lead three players high up the field in attack, which means at least one, or possibly both, of the 4-2-3-1 playing team's fullbacks have to stay back and focus on defence. By nullifying the opponent's fullbacks, a 4-3-3 playing team can then soak up pressure by staying organised, compact, before playing the ball forward and attacking in numbers. Music